What's up guys? Uh, I have right here my IS300 which is now powered by a 1JZ VDTi. And uh, prior to doing the swap as I was researching I found that it was kind of hard to find any sort of information that would help me make the swap easier so I figured I'd make a video to kind of explain what I had to go through, what sort of parts I used um, and what kind of fabrication I had to do to make this swap as easy as possible. Well, I'm actually on my way to ready to start my 1JZ swap. So I'm hoping, well actually I know for a fact this is the last time an IS-800 is going to sound like absolute shit. I mean, listen to it. Terrible. This is the old GE engine, and of course this is the new 1JZ. Uh, I had to take off some accessories from this engine and put it over to this guy. The alternator, the AC compressor, and the power steering pump. Now the power steering pump still has the GE reservoir on it. This is going to have to come off, and uh, I have to use the 1J reservoir to make space but right now we're actually taping up the old G harness that I pulled from this engine so pretty much most of the plugs on the old GE engine are gonna plug up to something minus uh, the O2 sensors because the ECU that I'm using doesn't require the factory O2 plugs like uh, this guy right here so there's one more thing you guys have to swap over from your stock 2JZ and that's the oil level sensor. It actually sits on the upper oil sump. So all you have to do is just unbolt the four 10 mil bolts uh, and then uh, put that onto your 1J or 2J, uh, plug it right back into your stock GE harness and uh, you're ready to go. Obviously one of the biggest questions I had while uh, researching for this swap was which 1J do I choose? You know, do I choose the 1J out of a JZX100, a Mark II Chaser, Cresta, or do I go 110, 171 Crown? Um, and I found out that the 110 and the 171s have ETCSI. Now, if you guys know, the OEM 2J out of IS300 has ETCSI, and I means that it has the uh, E throttle body. So, uh, yeah, I went with this engine. Now, the reason why I went with the ETCSI is because I wanted to retain a lot of the factory elements. And also because if I have E throttle, electric throttle, uh, I can allow the Link ECU to, uh, to give me um, launch control and anti lag. So, yeah, if you guys are looking for which engine to use, I highly recommend getting the 1JZ. Uh, VVTi out of a 110 Mark II or Varosa or a 171 Crown. Make sure that when you're looking for an engine, you try to get one that's as complete as possible. And now, we, when I say complete, uh, you want one with, you know, the fuel line that goes from the fuel. This is called a fuel pulse dampener uh, that's attached to the block underneath the intake manifold. So I'm under the car right now, and. Uh, so that thing right there that's attached to the block is the fuel pulse dampener. And the fuel line that's attached to it is this guy. This guy. So that's what came with the engine when I bought it. And it attaches to this fitting right here, which is a part of the car. So this is the fuel feed that goes to the rail. Uh, this piece right here 
is from the JZX 110 or uh, JZS 171 uh, and this back end right here that it's attached to this side is a factory IS 300 so you gotta remove this guy uh, from your car uh, when you originally do the swap and of course swap it out with uh, 171 uh, the fuel return setup is pretty easy to do as well um, this fuel pressure regulator I had in my Corolla so it's kind of just laying around I obviously reused it uh, the fuel lines are very easy to make I just ordered about 15 feet of uh, dash 6 fuel line and then uh, there's a original there's the original fuel pressure regulator that's sitting on this end of the fuel rail um, you just kind of unbolt that at a AN fitting on this end obviously connect this uh, fuel line to the fuel rail and this fuel line goes to the pressure regulator and of course the bottom side goes to the return so unfortunately I don't have any video of uh, me making the fuel return uh, kind of the sender fuel pump package but that is online actually and there's couple ways to do it, you're just going to have to buy a bulkhead fitting um, and I highly recommend getting a upgraded fuel pump. I just kind of picked a Walbro the 255. Um, it fit right in the tank. If you get like the 450, it's actually too tall and the fuel pump won't fit in the tank. So get the 255. I think it's plenty for a stock 1G. And uh, that should solve the uh, fuel return setup. So if you guys take a closer look. I don't have an ABS box, but that's because I actually got rid of it. I did an ABS delete and a brake booster delete. So I got a kit from Chase Base and uh, I opted to go with the one that deletes not only the brake booster, the ABS box. The reason why I did that was because I was already planning for the swap and I didn't really want to mess with uh, either cutting the line short and moving the ABS unit to the battery side. I just feel like it's a cleaner look and not only that, but it also gives you a lot more space to work on your turbo, or your manifold, etc. Uh, one quick note about the power steering reservoir. Uh, this bracket I kind of quickly fabbed up at Greddy. Um, it just basically sits on an open hole right there and on the bottom so it doesn't move around. I've seen guys zip tie it to their uh, shock tower or even the side of the engine, but I feel like this is the cleanest look. Okay, before I get into the exhaust stuff, I want to talk about uh, the engine brackets and engine mounts. Uh, my engine mounts were toast, and I already knew that I wanted a stiffer, higher performance setup, so I got the solid engine mounts from Excessive Manufacturing, um, this guy right here. Uh, now the engine bracket, so the one that comes on the 1J it looks similar to the OEM IS300 engine brackets but I was reading around and it said that if you use the uh, the 110 or 171 brackets your engine will sit too far forward I think anyway that's what I read so I actually went ahead and swapped out the engine bracket so this guy right here the silver part is from my IS300 now the numbers on the actual bracket were the same but the letters uh, were different. It was, I think it was B or A as opposed to the other. So this is from my IS and uh, this is from Excessive Manufacturing and everything pretty much lines up perfectly. Okay so the downpipe, this guy right here, the turbo elbow is from Future Fab. And originally I had the atmospheric wastegate dump, but like the website states, it sounded like a exhaust leak. So uh, after about a week of driving it, I cut it off right here and rerouted it into the downpipe. Well, as far as exhaust goes, um, you're just gonna have to custom make from here to, I don't know, wherever your stock or desired location is and uh, take it all the way to the back but that flange right there so this piece was actually a modified gritty piece and for the rear section is a custom one-off gritty exhaust that I made uh, but you can pretty much fit any off-the-shelf exhaust uh, to finish it off so with this 1J I actually uh, resealed the whole engine so I got new valve cover gaskets, new water pump, a water pump pulley 
uh, all the miscellaneous seals and gaskets around the turbo, uh, the front main seal, rear main seal, uh, intake manifold gasket, the injector o-ring. So they sell a, a gasket kit online. Um, and a lot of the seals and gaskets were actually shared with the original 2J. So um, like the o-rings for the injectors, I just kind of got the IS300 OEM o-rings. The valve cover gaskets are obviously specific to the engine, so I ordered that on drift motion. Um, water pump pulleys off of drift motion. And as far as the accessories like the power steering pump, alternator, and AC condenser, I used everything out of my IS300. So the original 2J accessories is on here right now. Power steering pump, AC condenser, and alternator. Now for the power steering pump, you're going to have to get this uh, fitting. So this rubber hose right here connects to the power steering pump, but this fitting right here um, you need because the original one for the IS300, there's a canister, or the reservoir actually sits bolted onto the power steering pump. So just go on drift motion and you should be able to find this power steering pump fitting that's going to allow you to attach this rubber hose. Okay, now the throttle cable. Um, the original IS300 throttle cable is actually too short and it's not going to be able to reach from the firewall to the throttle body so um, you can always buy a JZA80 or the MK4 throttle cable for a hundred something dollars or you can go to your local junkyard and buy a throttle cable off of a I believe it was a 95 94 to 97 Toyota uh, Camry V6 and uh, that will reach the throttle body so I got that from the junkyard for about five bucks alright so radiator hoses uh, this upper one is obviously way different from the original IS300 one so I ordered this on Amazon I think it was like thirty dollars or something uh, it comes with both the upper and lower radiator hose but this is for a JZX100 um, and the lower one actually I reused the IS300 one because the shape of the JZX100 hose was a little different now for the heater hoses like I mentioned earlier try to get an engine that's as complete as possible because these are what came uh, on the engine when I bought the setup and it worked actually perfectly for uh, the original IS300 location and these were uncut uh, it was still on the engine when it was shipped and uh, I was able to reuse them so do that look for an engine setup that's complete and uh, you will save headaches one thing I do want to mention is if you guys are going to do the swap uh, you guys already have the engine out uh, going over the seals uh, the gaskets why not change your coils um, to perhaps new ones because you don't really know the condition of the coils uh, so in my case I actually opted to go with ignition projects direct replacement ignition coils and the optional uh, ignition or igniter chip so that's the optional igniter chip that's provided by ignition projects and uh, I got all new spark plugs spark plug wires and obviously the direct replacement ignition coils so I know that I can be certain that everything's gonna be working 100% and uh, yeah it's just one of those things where it's you know preventative maintenance like you don't know the condition of, of the coils that came with the car sometimes there's hairline cracks on a rubber grommet and uh, that can cause misfires uh, loss of power and just decreased fuel efficiency so okay now moving on to kind of the more challenging parts of the swap uh, the first thing is the intercooler now there is no intercooler kit on the market that's going to directly bolt onto whatever engine you choose except for maybe a NAT setup you're gonna have to go with a custom intercooler setup that pretty much any fab shop can build for you um, again it won't be cheap but it will be proper and uh, specific to which whichever engine you choose in my case obviously I uh, do a lot of work with Gretty Performance so they let me build my own intercooler setup uh, the most challenging part was actually uh, getting this pipe through this tiny area right here and one of the things that I had to do was I actually had to hammer the power steering hard line back a little bit so 
the hard line kind of goes forward um, I got a mallet and kind of hammered it backwards that way so that I can make some clearance for this pipe to shoot down and uh, once you get access to the lower side of the, the car uh, everything else was pretty much just straight up uh, welding pipes together and connecting it uh, now for this side uh, this side was actually pretty easy um, the one thing that I did do was I cut the original charge pipe right here and used another bend uh, at ready to shoot this pipe straight down at an angle and again it's just a big U that goes to the front of the car to the actual uh, intercooler core all right now moving on to what's possibly my favorite part about the swap now going back to the beginning I wanted to build a car that was very much streetable uh, has all the luxuries of air conditioning no check engine lights and of course the accessibility to future upgrades so the ECU that I went with is by excessive manufacturing panic wire and link the box inside here is actually a direct replacement box so this box right here pretty much replaces your stock ECU and then this patch harness was made by panic wire uh, all the plugs right here are the factory IS300 plugs that pretty much fits right in now with this setup I have 100% tunability of course for future upgrades like fuel injectors uh, turbo upgrades also excessive manufacturing and panic wire just released their kit for a GS300 so if you have a GS they have a similar kit that's pretty much drop in uh, it replaces a factory ECU you have AC uh, and of course you know everything that's configurable like cruise control launch control anti-lag the link excessive kit also comes with a sub harness that connects to your uh, factory mass airflow sensor plug and the sub harness comes with two plugs one is for the air intake sensor and the second plug actually is pretty cool because you can add an extra analog input that can be used for some stuff like fuel pressure, nitrous pressure, oil pressure, even an external map sensor. So I knew I wanted to retain AC and of course I wanted to do future upgrades so in my personal opinion obviously it's not going to be the cheapest option but I think it's the most ideal trust me when I say this go with the excessive manufacturing panic wire link ECU it's all in one package it's pretty much plug-and-play actually it is plug-and-play 100 uh, percent you got full accessibility to the ECU tuning for future upgrades and whatnot and I can't stress this enough the AC works I didn't have to do any fiddling with the ECU or the wires for the compressor it's just plug-and-play and go I, mean, I don't know about you guys but I think that's pretty cool especially because I do drive this car on the road so I like enjoying AC uh, no crazy funky check engine lights uh, the temperature gauge works fuel level works everything pretty much works as it was intended to be OEM spec uh, so that's my favorite part about the swap is this link excessive panic wire ECU kit okay let's talk uh, numbers real quick so I actually had the chance to get the car on the dyno with the help of Jason from Link uh, we were kind of able to optimize the stock setup and of course that includes VVTI and using the uh, excessive man manufacturing optional boost controller solenoid. This thing actually plugs into your factory harness. Um, so the other end of this plug for the max solenoid connects to the uh, I think it was bank one sensor one uh, O2 harness on your engine harness and uh, then the computer does the rest. But now speaking of dyno tuning, the numbers if you guys can take a look at this uh, the max power that we saw was about 294 horsepower at uh, 299 pound-feet of torque. Now, we could have gone more if we had increased the boost, but I'm actually using the stock CT15, and those are actually notorious for uh, grenading, I think, 300 is enough. In fact, I was actually going to be happy with 275, 280 horsepower to the wheels, but we got a little bit more than that, so... I'm not going to complain. 